How can we use Mod Organizer to install scripted faux mods, SKSE, and SkyUI? That is the question I'm going to answer in this video. One of the positive developments over the last few years in modding has been scripted installers, or as people know them for Nexus Mod Manager, faux mod installers. And these are mods that have been packaged in such a way that when you run them in Nexus Mod Manager, you get a nice little installation menu. It's very user-friendly and it makes choosing the options uh, pretty simple. To show you what I mean, I'm going to use Winter is Coming Cloaks. Uh, this is a great mod that adds massive thick fur coats, the type of cloaks you see in uh, Game of Thrones. And this is a great, a great mod. It's one of my essential mods and it's packaged with a faux mod installer. So I'm going to download with manager and have that download to Mod Organizer. And once it's downloaded, I will double click as usual, but this time it will extract the files and then open this window. As you can see, it's giving me the choices between the main plugin, the one that just adds the cloaks all over the place in the game, or the one that lets me just craft them, or that adds them to the game but not to guards. I will select the main plugin. I now get prompted for one of the optional files. This is for the Cloaks of Skyrim patch. That is another mod that adds cloaks, but thinner, smaller cloaks, ones with patterns on them. And there is a compatibility patch between the two. And if I'm using it, I can choose the main cloaks patch. Now I don't have it installed, so I will click none. I will click next, and then it will install the mod. Once it's installed, I'm just gonna quickly double click on it and have a look at the file tree. And as you can see, it's got a single ESP. It's got a few other files, including textures and meshes. So everything's been installed fine, handles it no problem. You will notice in the optional ESPs, there are no optional ESPs. And therein lies one potential weakness with using the faux mod installer like this with Mod Organizer. Because one of the powerful things with Mod Organizer is the ability to have the optional ESPs installed with the mod, but not in use. So that if at a later date, I get the Cloaks of Skyrim mod installed, I can simply add the optional ESP without any hassle. If you do install the Cloaks of Skyrim mod, there are a couple of options for changing Winter is Coming to work with it. Uh, for a start, you could simply remove the mod and then reinstall it from scratch. This is not the way I would recommend doing it because obviously it's a little, well, it, it's doing a few more steps than needed. I'm going to select the main cloaks patch and then install. So now when I look at the file structure, I will have two ESPs. Now, here's the thing. What I would tend to do with a mod like this is actually install it with any of the options I might have. And then with Skycloak's patch, just move it to the optional ESPs. So now the way I've installed this, it actually doesn't require Cloaks of Skyrim because I've actually moved the patch to the optional files. But when I install Cloaks of Skyrim, and I'm going to install Cloaks of Skyrim, I can simply go along and drag it down. That can be dangerous though, and the reason that can be dangerous is when you select those options, it might not just be the ESP that uh, has been added. There may be some other changes. So this, this can be a little dangerous. The safest way is definitely to just keep removing the mod and uh, reinstalling it each time you get a new mod. However, there are some faster ways of doing this. If I reinstall the mod with my original settings, as in no patch, and then I install the cloaks of Skyrim, instead of removing this and then re-adding it, I can simply right click and reinstall mod. And it will skip straight to the installation options and allow me to pick the patch and then it will give me the following menu. Now, my usual recommendation at this point is to click replace 
because that just deletes all the old files for you and adds uh, the new selections, sort of a complete fresh reinstall. But you can also add merge. And what that does is it simply adds any new files that you've selected. So if I, if I do that now, you will see when I open up and look at the file tree, I now have the patch. The downside of the merge option is if I do that again, if I go to reinstall mod and say deselect or, or do not choose the, the patch and then click merge again, when I go back and look at the file tree, it may have added any new files it needed, which was in this case none, but it didn't remove the patch. Um, so you, you should be aware of that. The way to actually do that is to use the replace function. So if I do main plugin, I don't select the patch this time and I hit replace. What it will do is delete all the old files, add the ones that's needed, and then the file tree will be correct. Now the other option here is to once again right click and reinstall mod. Make the choices that you're going to have, say main plugin and I'm going to have the main cloaks patch. Click next and then rename. And what this does is it actually creates a whole new installation of the mod winter is coming. And you need to add a name. So I'm going to put with cloaks of Skyrim patch, for example. Click OK, and it will create a completely new installation. So there you go, I've got Winter is Coming Cloaks. If I look at the file tree there, I only have the main ESP. If I look at this one, it has the patch. So I can actually have both installations and then simply enable whichever one I need. Obviously that's you know, twice as much room in Mod Organizer and probably twice as much file space on your hard drive. Which method you use to update the mod in this manner is probably going to come down to personal taste. Personally, I prefer to do a complete fresh installation. So either I'm going to use replace each time I add a new mod and I need to change the patches for another one, or occasionally I might even just remove the mod and reinstall it from the download. Um, it's, it's, that's more because I love the feeling of a complete fresh install for things like this. And finally, for the real power users out there, there is another way of installing this type of mod, and that is to go straight to manual, and then it will take you pretty much to what you're used to. It will give you all of the meshes and textures. It will tell you the main plugin, the craft only plugin, and you can then decide which of these you want. So for example, I'm going to need the meshes and text textures. So I'm going to drag them up to the top folder. I do not need the faux mod information. The readme, winter is coming. I'm probably going to want that. So I'm going to drag the readme up to data. And then I'm going to deselect the readme. There is a pictures. Now pictures is probably more for the faux mod installer, so I'm not going to need that. And then I no longer need meshes and textures because there's nothing in it. The main plugin, I'm going to need the craft only plugin. I want the guards plugin. And once I've moved all of those plugins to the data folder, I can deselect all of these as well. And I now have meshes, textures. I have the readme file and a lot of ESPs, and it already knows that it looks good because I've moved these to below data. So I don't actually need to tell it set data directory. It's already figured it out. And then click OK and build it in this manner. And once it is built, I can double click, go along to the optional ESPs, and then move all of the optional ESPs into the correct section, the optional ESPs, and I now have, if I look at the file tree, the main ESP, I have the textures, the meshes, all of the optional um, ESPs are in this folder. We can ignore those. And then at a later date, if I change my mind, I can of course say, okay, you know, I don't want the guards to have them. And I've also now got 
Cloaks of Skyrim. So I'm going to add that. And now go to the file tree and I've got those selected instead. So if you are a power user and you want to add every single option into a single mod, you can do that and then play with it to your heart's content. Just be careful when using this sort of technique. You need to know how the mod works because, of course, some of those options, when you select them in the faux mod installer, may have added other textures and meshes. So when you do this, you need to know that building the file structure in this manner works. And that, I'm afraid, is going to come down to you. You are going to have to do the research. You're going to have to check the README. A lot of mod authors will actually tell you how to do manual installations and tell you which files you need. So check their pages and in that respect, you're kind of on your own. But you do have the power to do that. You do have the power to build the mod any way you like. Let's talk about script extenders and how they work with Mod Organizer. Now, if you are the sort of modder who is considering using an advanced tool such as Mod Organizer, the chances are you already use a script extender. I mean, for example, if you are modding Skyrim and you're thinking of changing to Mod Organizer, you are almost certainly using SKSE. There are so many great mods that require it. I would say it was a very rare individual who mods their game quite extensively and doesn't use it. However, if you've not used it and you're thinking about trying it out, I have done a video on that. I will leave a link down below. But one of the things that connects all the, Sky, the script extenders from Skyrim, Fallout, Oblivion and so on is you need to run the script extender before the game. You do not go straight to the game. And I want to discuss how that works with the mod organizer. Okay, the first step is to install the script extender. I'm going to close down mod organizer, and you'll see why in a little while. And I'm going to go along to the SKSE webpage, skse-silverlock.org. Now, for the Skyrim script extender, there are a few ways of installing this. The first way is the installer. Now... I actually don't recommend this. I don't recommend this. I am going to show you that first, and I will tell you why I don't recommend it. And there is also the 7Z archive, and I've downloaded both of those to my desktop so that we can look at them. Now, you can actually install SKSE using the installer pretty much the same way as you would for Nexus Mod Manager. However, there are some, some downsides to it, and I will talk about that in a second. But first of all, let's install it. So, that is where my Skyrim is. I'm going to click Next. I don't need a desktop shortcut because, of course, I'm going to be running my game for a mod organizer all the time. And then I'm going to click Install. And once it's installed, run Skyrim Mod Organizer and it should detect SKSE immediately and actually default for that one. And now if I click Run, it will run SKSE. And to test this is working, I've also installed my own mod, Immersive Hood. So I can run this just to test that it is, in fact, working. And once in game, I can see there is no heads-up display. And if I take my bow out, there's the crosshair. So it, it seems to be working just fine. So you can see setting that up is pretty simple. However, I did say that I don't recommend doing it that way. And there are two reasons. And I'm going to show you the data folder to start with. And this is the first reason I don't recommend it. Installing SKSE this way has installed a folder filled with scripts. It has installed all of the scripts into a folder in your data folder. And as I've said, this kind of goes against the way Mod Organizer does things. And indeed, here's the important thing. If I now run the game, but run it without SKSE, it is still going to load the SKSE scripts. So if I wanted for some reason to run the vanilla game, perhaps I've got a profile set up that is a vanilla profile. I will talk about profiles more later on. They are very powerful and very important. But if I have a vanilla profile and I want to run the game via Skyrim, unfortunately, 
those scripts will still be there. I found no way to disable them. Well, that's not exactly true. You can actually disable individual files from the data folder by right-clicking and hiding them. That will actually stop them from being loaded, but it will do that for every single profile. So you can't set up a profile for SKSE and a profile without. Plus, you'll need to do it for every single file that is there, and you'll have to know which those files are. And then when you want to go back to using it, unhide them all. As you can imagine, that is you know, time consuming and prone to error. The second reason I recommend against using the installer is conflict detection. And this is pretty damned important when it comes to SKSE scripts. You don't have this issue with the other script extenders because they did not have scripts as resources the way Skyrim does, but for Skyrim it does. And I'm going to show you what I mean by avoiding conflicts by creating a conflicting mod. I've, I've created a folder, my SKSE conflicting mod. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make a new folder called scripts. This is where scripts are normally found. And I've got a new version of the actor script. The actor script is a script that is applied to all actors in the game. Don't worry about it too much. However, it is a script that SKSE changes, and if you are running SKSE, it is essential those changes are there. The script is important. So, I've got my new mod that actually has a script that will conflict now with SKSE. I'm going to add it to an archive. What am I going to call this? I want to add to archive and call it my SKSE conflicting mod. Capitalize that. I would like to be neat. And once I've got that, I'm going to place that on my desktop and close this down. Go back to Skyrim mod organizer, add the file manually. My SKSE conflicting mod. Okay, my SKSE conflicting mod. Yes, thank you. I will do that. And now I have this mod. And I'm going to activate it. And I've got absolutely no warnings. If I go to my data folder and try to find this script. There you go. Actor.pex. My SKSE conflicting mod. Now you can see here, it's highlighted in red. Which means it's conflicting with something that is in data. So if I look at this area, I can see it was actually conflicting with something that was already in data. It doesn't tell me what it's conflicting with, although usually if it's conflicting with something in data, it's conflicting with the vanilla game. And normally, that's fine. That's what all mods do. They replace things in the vanilla game, or most mods do. So you might not think there is a problem, but there could be. Here is the thing with these scripts. In general, in general, I can't see any reason why a mod author would ever replace them. At least in 99.9999% of the cases, uh, I think there will be better ways of doing it. And I've not found a mod yet. Perhaps there is a mod out there. And if that mod did not use the SKSE version as its base, it used the vanilla version, it will remove all of the things that SKSE requires, and therefore it will break SKSE. It may not break it completely, it may just have some strange effects, it may make certain mods not work correctly, but it is slightly dangerous. But you'll notice, I get absolutely no warning here whatsoever. So unless I look specifically at the files, I'm not going to see it. Now you can, you can actually double click and go on to conflicts and you can see again it's overwritten just something in data it's not giving you a huge amount of information now if you know skse and you know it's replaced this script fine you can figure it out but if not you can very very easily miss this and that to me is a big danger
Okay, so I have now uninstalled SKSE again, and I'm going to reinstall it the way I would recommend for Mod Organizer. Now, it's very similar to how I recommend installing for Nexus Mod Manager, so it's not that hard. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just extract here. I'm going to extract, no, extract to SKSE, so it'll just make a little folder here, and I'm going to go into that folder and I'm looking for all of the files beginning with SKSE. And I'm just going to control C or right click and copy. And then I'm going to open my Skyrim game folder, not the data folder, not the data folder. And I'm going to copy these right in there. Now the SKSE binaries have been installed. That part is done. So now of course I need to do the scripts. However, this is where things are a little different to Nexus Mod Manager. I'm going to close this folder, and in fact, I'm going to delete the folder and close down fences. I'm going to start Mod Organizer right now, and you'll see it's actually detected SKSE, even though I haven't got the scripts installed. I haven't got them installed. The binary has been installed. I'm going to now install a new mod from an archive. I'm going to choose the archive that is SKSE. And when I do, it's going to open up with no game data on top level. And I'm going to open this up a little bit. There's the scripts. That's what we're looking for. And in actual fact, that is the data directory. I can set the data directory and everything else will disappear. And all that is left are the scripts and the source for the script. If you're interested in reading the source, you don't need this, but there's no reason to remove it. It's sort of up to you. If you really want to save a tiny bit of space, and I do mean a tiny bit of space, that will have no effect on your game whatsoever, you can. You do need all of these script files though. And then click OK. It has now added the the script files. Now I might want to change that. So rename mod SKSE scripts, just so I know for absolute sure what I'm dealing with. And if I go into the file tree scripts, there are all the files this mod is adding. Okay, so I'm going to put that up there. And I'm going to enable it. It needs to be enabled. And now of course, if I go along to scripts, I can see Active Magic Effects Actor, that's the, that's the one we're going to be messing with, has been installed by SKSE. If I now enable my SKSE conflicting mod, there you go. You get that little warning, overwrites files. It's recognized it's overwritten a file, so I can go along and see it's conflicting with SKSE. And what is probably even more useful is if you wait a few seconds, there you go. An icon will appear there telling you that files have been overwritten. And this is what you want to keep your eyes on. You want to make sure that nothing overwrites these files. Or if they are overwritten, you know which mod is doing it. So you can see very quickly this mod is conflicting with SKSE and then you can go off and find out why it's doing that and whether it is compatible with SKSE because it might be. Don't instantly panic. Go off and question the mod author or see if it's in the readme. Um, is this script compatible with SKSE? That is pretty important. But as you can see, this gives you an immediate visual warning. In fact, you might even want to rename this to, you know, real capital letters and, I don't know, <laughs> make something, oh, it won't allow stars, but you want to make it so that you will spot this one if this one is getting overwritten. So this is one of the reasons that I recommend installing it this way. So there you go. I now have SKSE installed. And of course, I can disable SKSE scripts if I intend to create a profile that doesn't have any SKSE mods and I'm going to run Skyrim. And I can do that all from here. At this point, I want to talk about SkyUI because it does have a minor issue when you install it with Mod Organizer. 
and it's not a big issue. It's a really, really easy issue to fix. There are two ways around it. Uh, but I wanted to mention it because, of course, Sky UI is the most popular mod for Skyrim. And it is possible that there are some other mods that have similar problems with their installers. And so I will just show you what the problem is. I go along to the Sky UI page, go to the file section, download with manager, and let Mod Organizer do its thing. There you go, it's finished. If I now double click on this, here is what happens. I get this little box here saying running external installer. Note this installer will not be aware of other installed mods. Um, you can force it to close, confirm, and it will close that window. You don't actually need to do that. Don't worry. This looks very panicky. Um, what is happening here is this box is telling you that you do not have the SKSE scripts installed. And if your first thought is, that is because I've installed it my way rather than using the installer, you would be incorrect. It will not detect them even if they are in the data folder. It doesn't matter how you install SKSE. The installer here for SkyUI just cannot find those scripts. It actually doesn't matter. You can just go along and click install and it will work pretty much exactly out of the box. I mean, if I double click on that to check the file tree, I've got the readme, the BSA and the ESP, and that is actually all I need. And there you go, without any problems. Now, occasionally people have reported that all they're getting is this window and they're not seeing this one. Um, I'm wondering if this is perhaps because they've got it maximized and all they're seeing is this, and this one is staying at the back. I'm not totally sure, but try looking around the window. However, if that is not working, if for some reason this is coming up, but this doesn't, don't worry, there are still ways to get this mod installed. Um, it is not difficult at all. I will show you that now. I'm gonna go along to the main file again. I'm going to download it manually this time. And it'll place that on my desktop once it is downloaded. I'm going to double click on this to open it and I'm going to take the faux mod. That is, that is the information that the faux mod installer needs and I'm going to delete it. I'm going to use WinRAR or 7Z, it doesn't matter which you use, to delete it and leave just the ESP, the BSA and the README because I know these are the only files it actually needs. And then I'm going to manually install it. And that, I can, I can check it using manual, but it looks good. And that will install it exactly the same way. The, the disadvantage there being you don't get the Nexus ID by default. You can, of course, double click, go along to the Nexus info and set the mod ID yourself. It's really not that difficult. So that is an alternative way of doing this if for some reason you don't get that pop-up window. And that is about it for this video. Now, whilst we have not exhausted the subject of how to install mods, and I will be coming back to that subject several times in this series, we're going to move forward in part five to a more, um, well, mod organizer specific topic. And the topic is profiles. This is one of the major reasons for using this tool, in my opinion, and I know a lot of people are excited to see what you can do with them. You guys are more than welcome to join me there for that video. And of course, I look forward to seeing you there. And until then, remember, as always, have fun.